Can Mike Gesicki, trending or ending, that second half pace from 2019, is that is that a trend? Are we going to begin the Gesicki experience? The Miami Dolphins tied in the uh, – talk about – a player that got you really, really excited after his combine performance where he, he just breaks every measurable possible. He's an absolute athletic freak. He is it, he is a, a tough case, but but it, was he a prisoner of Adam Gase where the Adam Gase regime drafted him into Miami. They spent a, a very high draft capital. Was he a second-round pick? I'm pulling this off the top of my head. But I know they drafted him very early. It is a second-round pick, Mike. Thank you, Brooks. And, I mean, those those first couple of years, you just, you're just you like, wow, Mike Kosicki. Holy cow, this dude is an absolute massive bust. But then <laughs> Preston Williams goes down. And from weeks 10 through 17, he's the tight end nine in fantasy points per game. Now, tight end nine is not... That that doesn't really get you hot and bothered uh, to make it up to the number nine, but it's was this the emergence? Is this of things that things that could come for Mike Gesicki? Because if he gets the opportunity, he should be able to make the most out of it. And you have reports now coming out uh, from ESPN, Cameron Wolf saying they we expect Mike Gesicki to be used in the slot. Like we're going to turn him into a big slot guy, and like. And Chan Gailey is very pass heavy there. Right. And that's, I mean, you want to talk about the big slot. That's how Jordan Reed was dominant. That's how, that's when you see Evan Engram getting open. It's because he's the big dude in the slot and he's getting featured. How are you feeling, Jason, about Mike Gesicki's uh, pos the possibility that he takes that and he turns that into Let, a, like a season long performance? Let's call trending a top 12 finish. Yeah, I, I think that's in the, I, I think that's a very likely outcome for Mike Gesicki. I remember when we were scouting his college tape, I was very down on Gesicki because of, I thought the way they utilized him, he was coming in so raw mm -hmm. and he was going to take time to develop into an NFL tight end because the way his college program used him was not in any way, shape or form how NFL tight ends are, are utilized. Well, the opportunity came, you brought up Preston Williams. And so there's a big question of like, well, was he just, you know, was he just in the right time? Right. You know, the splits with and without. He was the pressing. replacement player. There was right. also some Rosen time in there. Yeah, that's true. You know, average six fantasy points a game. Uh, you know, when Preston Williams was out there, eleven and a half. When uh, Preston Williams was gone, but the Dolphins don't have a ton of options or great weapons. So the way that I view this is, they now see that they have a special player. They are going to get him involved. Because it's a really easy path for him. Who's he really got to beat? A uh, Preston Williams coming back off of a bad you know, right. knee injury? However, it's the Miami Dolphins. The upside is not going to be there. He's not going to be able to take the Mark Andrews leap. Because you know Mark Andrews, we saw some of the, the, He reminds me so much of Mark Andrews. Really good telling sticky stats at the end of the year that say this guy could be a legit fantasy option. The big difference is we could see the Ravens taking that step forward as an offense with Lamar Jackson. I don't know that the Dolphins are taking some massive step forward in offense next year with either Fitzpatrick or a rookie. So I think a low-end tight end one is what Kasicki is right now. And you'll have the Fitzpatrick dilemma all year long. Ryan Fitzpatrick, we love him on this show. We love him because he creates fantasy players. He turned Devontae Parker – from a four-year bust into a breakout, one of the best fantasy players of of last year, he can do that with with Mike Gesicki. But Miami's going to draft a rookie, and at what point do they pull the plug on Ryan Fitzpatrick? And now your your outlooks of Gesicki being that low end tight end one, it it takes a really big shot at the probability. I'm going to say they pull the plug on the week that he throws four interceptions. <laughs> So oh, that Fitzpatrick, week, week so three. It, who knows? Week, who knows? I do agree that there's just not a lot of, there's not going to be an, a lot of competition for Gesicki for targets. Even though we're here, we're now before free agency. The Dolphins are a team that's going, you know, they have a a, a sickening amount of draft picks. A gus sickening? A gus sickening amount. And those are players that are going to have to come to fruition, mature, develop. I don't think they're going to spend a ton in free agency 
on this kind of transitional year where there will be a quarterback transition taking place most likely. So ultimately, the opportunity, the window for Gesicki right now with Chan Gailey, with this news, with what we saw last year, I'll, I'll go ahead and agree on the, the trending assessment. Get Zooks! You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. If you want to see more, click that subscribe button.